Our first lesson for 1.3 is 1.3a, on estimating square roots. Our goal for this lesson is to estimate an irrational square root to one decimal place. Now in order to do that, in order to be successful with this lesson, you guys must have your first 15 perfect squares memorized. Now you don't have to, you don't have to write down what I've written in orange, but I want to emphasize to you guys how crucial it is for this lesson that you have those first 15 perfect squares memorized. If you do not have them memorized, you're going to have a very difficult time with this lesson. So I encourage you guys, take some time after school, memorize those first 15 perfect squares. So what I want to do for the lesson is I want to actually just take a look at a couple examples and give you notes on what I'm doing as I go along. So if we're given a problem where we want to estimate the square root of 28, square uh, 28 is not a perfect square, so we do not know what, tw what the square root of 28 is exactly equal to. Okay, so what we can do is actually estimate the square root to one decimal place. Now, the first step that we want to take is we want to identify the two perfect squares closest to the square root. So again, identify the two perfect squares closest to the square root. In this case, the two perfect squares closest to 28 are going to be 25, and 36. All right, 5 squared gives us 25, 6 squared gives us 36. Those are the two perfect squares closest to the square root of 28. And now what we want to do is we want to place these three numbers on a number line. So you're going to go ahead and make a number line. And I'm going to place the square root of 25 over here and the square root of 36 over here. All right, so that's my second step. Place the two perfect squares on and the square root on a number line. Now, when placing the square root on the number line, we have to be sure to place the square root close to where it makes sense on the number line. And here's what I mean by that. If we're looking at the square root of 28, we have to ask ourselves, all right, is that going to be and I'm going to put some circles on my number line. You don't have to put those circles, but I just want to make you aware of what I'm talking about. The square root of 28, is that going to be very close to the square root of 25? Maybe right in this place here. Is it going to be kind of close to the square root of 25? Maybe in this place here. Is it going to be kind of more in the middle? Pretty much exactly between 25 and 36. Is it going to be kind of close to 36? Or is it going to be very close to 36? Okay. Now, in my opinion, the square root of 28, that would be, that would be pretty close to kind of close to the square root of 25. So I'm going to take the square root of 28 and put it in the number line right here. Okay. In my mind, that's where the square root of 28 should go on the number line, closer to 25, in fact, much closer to 25 than it is to 36. But now we go back to those perfect squares that we put under the square root signs. We know that the square root of 25 is going to be 5. And we know that the square root of 36 is going to be 6. So here is what that should tell us. That should tell us that the square root of 28 is 5 point something. But because the square root of 28 is close to the square root of 25, it should be 5 point something small. All right? So now, what we need to do is we need to use guess and check to identify the estimate whose square root is closest to the square root. Again, we're not going to find the exact value for the square root, but we're just going to estimate. And so if the square root of 28 is pretty close to the square root of 25, I'm going to guess 5 point something pretty small. I'm going to guess 5.2. And so if I take 5.2 and I square it, meaning I multiply 5.2 by itself, and here's when we, where we need to have our math skills where we're able to actually do some, some two-digit multiplication. 2 times 2 gives me 4. I don't care anything. 2 times 5 is 10. Bring down a 0 for a place value holder. 5 times 2 is 10. Carry the 1. 5 times 5 is 25, plus 1 is 26. Now I add. 
and I get 27.04, okay? Now what I'm looking for here is I'm going to compare this number to this number here. 27.04 obviously is smaller than 28. I need to make at least two guesses for every single I need to make uh, at least two guesses for every single for every single problem. Now because this, because 27.04 is a little bit smaller than 28, I need another guess that's going to be bigger than this 5.2. So I'm going to guess 5.3. So now I'm squaring 5.3. 3 times 3 is 9. I don't care anything. 3 times 5 is 15. 5 times 3 is 15. Carry the 1. 5 times 5 is 25. Plus 1 is 26. No, oh, I forgot the 0 for the placeholder. Again, 5 times 3 is 15. Carry the 1. 5 times 5 is 25. Plus 1 is 26. Now I do my math, carry the 1, and I end up with 28.09. What needs to happen is I need to have two products. So I've got one product here, and I've got another product here. Okay, two products. And those two products need to be on either side of this number under the square root. That number under the square root is called the radicand. Okay? And I do in this case. 28 is in between 27.04 and it's in between 28.09. Okay, that's good. That's what needs to happen. These two numbers, 5.2 and 5.3, are next to each other in a number line. And so the square root of 28 is going to be in between 5.2 and 5.3 but I need to estimate which one of these is actually closest to the square root of 28. Now here's where it gets a little tricky and sometimes students have some difficulties. All right. Because 28.09 is closer to 28 than 27.04 is, then we're going to use 5.3 is our estimate for the square root of 28. Okay? So our final answer for this problem, the square root of 28, is approximately equal to, that's what that sign means, the square root of 28 is approximately equal to 5.3. Okay? And that is it. That is all for that problem. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another one then. We're going to work on estimating the square root of 70. So again, the, the expectation when you're estimating a square root like this is to estimate it to one decimal place. So if we look back at our steps, our first step is to identify the two perfect squares closest to the square root. So the two perfect squares closest to the square root. Again, we need to have that list of perfect squares memorized in order to be successful with this lesson. That's going to be... square root of 64, and the square root of 81. And now what we need to do is we need to place the two perfect squares and the square root on a number line. I already placed the two perfect squares on the number line. I need to also place the square root on the number line. And this is the part of the problem that you need to get right from the beginning. Otherwise, you're going to have to do a lot more guess and check later on. So we're asking ourselves, Square root of 70, is it very close to square root of 64? Kind of close to the square root of 64? Pretty much right in between 64 and 81? Closer to 81? Or is it very close to 81? Okay? So think about where 70 would go on a number line between 64 and 81. In my mind, I would put the square root of 70 probably about right here. Okay, that's where I believe that it should go on a number line. So if the square root of 70 is going to go right there, and I know that the square root of 64 is 8, and the square root of 81 is 9, that tells me that the square root of 70 must be approximately equal to 8 point something. It's supposed to be a question mark. 
and our goal is to figure out what that something is. We know it's 8 point something because it's between 8 and 9. So now we need to just guess and check until we get two products that are on either side of 70. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess 8.4 and see how that goes for me. So I'm going to take 8.4 and square it. So right now I'm just guessing that the square root of 70 is approximately equal to 8.4. So I'm taking 8.4 and squaring it to see if it gets me close to 70. So I take 8.4 and square it, which means I multiply it by itself. So 8.4 times 8.4. Well, 4 times 4 gives me 16. Carry the 1. 4 times 8 is 32. Plus 1 is 33. 0 for a placeholder. Now the tenths place, or I'm sorry, the ones place, I guess. 8 times 4 is 32. Carry the 3. 8 times 8 is 64. Plus 3 is 67. Now I add these together. And I get 70.56. That is very close to the 70 that I'm looking for. My problem, though, is that I don't know for, sh for certain that this product is the closest product that I can get to the 70. So I need to make one more guess. And since squaring 8.4 got me a number that's too big, that's bigger than 70, I need my next guess needs to be smaller in order to get a guess that's less than 70. So I'm going to take and square 8.3 this time. Again, the reason I'm choosing 8.3 to square is because when I squared 8.4, I get a number that's too big. So now I'm squaring 8.3 to see if that gets me a number that's closer to the square root of 70 or not. Okay, so 8.3 times 8.3. 3 times 3 is 9. 3, 3 times 8 is 24. 0 for a placeholder. Again, 8 times 3 is 24. Carry the 2. 8 times 8 is 64. Plus 2 is 66. And I add, and I get 68.89. At this point, these two numbers, 8.3 and 8.4, are right next to each other on a number line, right? They're right next to each other. There is no, I mean, there are smaller decimals in between 8.3 and 8.4, but none that go to the tenths place. So I have two guesses that are next to each other in 8.3 and 8.4. And I have two products that are on either side of 70. 68.89 is less than 70, while 70.56 is greater than 70. So now I know that one of these two guesses must be the best approximate for the square root of 70. And so I look back at the products. I'm looking here, and I'm looking here, and I'm asking myself, which one of these two products is closer to 70? Well, the answer for that, we could, if you're not sure, you could take 70 and subtract it from those two products to see which one's closer. Or, if you've got um, the ability to do so, you can just look at it and say, well, this is 56 hundredths, where this one is going to be over 1. So 56 hundredths is less, so this one is going to be closer to 70 than this one is. And that tells us that this 8.4 is our best guess. So the square root of 84, I'm sorry, the square root of 70 is going to be approximately equal to 8.4. Okay, we'll go over another one of these in class on Wednesday just to just make sure that we're feeling comfortable with these. Any questions, write them down. I'll put the, the steps back up for you to look at in case you need to pause the video and write them down again. Okay?